This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Mike Lee in Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chamel. Deborah, welcome to Five Questions. Thank you. Great to be here. What did you learn about TV production in high school when you were in the Junior Miss Beauty Contest? I learned nothing about TV production in high school, but when I was a senior in high school, literally two weeks before graduation, I represented my home state of Georgia in the America's Junior Miss contest, which back then was hosted by Michael Landon of the Little House on the Prairie fame. And the first two words I ever uttered on national television, they'd ask different girls to be part of the introduction of the show. And I was the last one. And Georgia said, Michael Landon. And that's the first thing I ever said on national TV. I don't think any other gal who was a part of that contest has been on national television first, but uh, since then, but, but I'm still here. So I saw the guys who were doing all the behind the scenes stuff as a contestant, and they were working grueling hours and doing really kind of, you know, menial work, but they were so friendly and so nice. This was the production team. And I thought, wow, I really wanted to be a lawyer. I really wanted to be a litigator because I'm, I'm passionate about facts. One of my mottos is facts are your friend. And I loved that as an attorney, I'd had an independent study on civil rights law. And I loved how if you were smart enough and tenacious enough and started with this legal case and went back, you could integrate the schools and you could end discrimination and you could, you could stop sexual harassment and illegal um, imprisonment of people. And, and it was just, to me, it was so cool that following the facts, you could do that. So I thought, wow, how could you take the research part of law, which was intriguing to me, and this production stuff these guys are doing that looks, frankly, just a lot of fun. I dreamed up I'd be a TV reporter. It was a good call. And you're one of the longest running anchors on TV. Yeah. Uh, what do you think has led to your longevity in such a competitive industry? Great question. And I think the answer applies just to just as equally to how do you have a long and healthy marriage as how do you have a long and successful career? And I think in a nutshell, it's don't take the bait. There are a lot of instances when you could take the bait, you could get into it, you could tussle. But if you take the long view, and look beyond whatever that momentary challenge or source of friction is, you will probably see beyond that momentary bit of friction to the end goal or a goal further down the pike and realize in the scheme of things, this moment is really unimportant. It's true. There's so many things in our lives that are unimportant. When looking Mm -hmm. back, it's like, oh, that was a stepping stone to this, or I learned what not to do or what to do more of. So life teaches us those lessons in that way. And you've encountered some major obstacles in your long run running career, like a jail sentence, being overweight in corporate politics. What is it about you that lets you persevere and triumph in the face of these obstacles? Um, I think I'm stubborn. Um, I think, I think I'm very much DIY. Um, I, I tend to be pretty independent. Um, I depend on myself. Um, if I let myself down, I know who to blame. If someone else lets me down, I'll probably blame myself too, because that means I relied too much on someone else. And if I would have made sure to cross all the T's or dot all the I's, perhaps whatever I'm disappointed about wouldn't have happened. Um, several years ago, they were doing all these crazy things with me at Inside Edition, doing lots of different jobs. And uh, the idea was was, um, brought up that I should record a song. Now, I'm not a rock star, um, but we recorded a song. But unfortunately, um, Inside Edition is too cheap to pay the song rights for someone else's song because I said, oh, let's sing such and such. I said, oh, we couldn't possibly pay for those rights. They said, you'll have to write the song. And so I worked with Junior Vasquez, who's this amazing um, hit maker with, he's worked with Whitney Houston and Madonna and, you know, really famous people. And he came up with some music, but I had to write the lyrics. And the lyrics, I think, sum up the answer to your question. The lyric goes, I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on pushing. Nobody's going to stop me now. And there's, there's a part of the, the bridge or whatever it's called. They don't believe in me. 
What I want, they say, won't come to me, but I know that my dreams will come true if I just keep on moving on. You got to believe. If you don't believe, if you don't believe, it's definitely not going to happen. And hopefully your belief is so strong and you're so committed and you've done all the right homework along the way that the people who would have been the doubters go, dang, she's really committed to this. I don't think I'm going to bet against her. And it usually works out. Yeah. Like you have to sell yourself on the idea first before you can convince other people. You have to, because you have to get yourself excited enough and gain that confidence to exude that excitement, yeah. confidence, and, and to influence others to get on board as well. Yep. And I love this idea of accountability. It feels like that's lacking a lot in society. You see it a lot with more like good leaders or entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. where at the end of the day, it's on you. Like yeah. if this thing fails, it's on you. Instead of pointing at someone else, if it's your fault, that actually drives you more because you, you don't want it to be your fault, right? Completely. And, and in terms of accountability, I think it's really important Um, that you hold yourself accountable in a very specific and written way. Um, When I wrote a book called Thank You Power, I was actually on Steve Harvey's radio show and a lady called in because in Thank You Power, the power of gratitude, and the book was really about the science behind gratitude, why it works, why you're more capable and and make better decisions and all of these things when you practice gratitude. And, And part of it is writing down three to five things on a regular basis for which you feel grateful. My list would be laughable probably to you. And I would look at yours and have no idea why this is a good thing. It doesn't matter. Your list is for you and mine is for me. And this woman called in and she said, you know, Deb, what you're talking about is what the Bible talks about in Habakkuk 2.2, 2, which is in the Old Testament. It says, and the Lord said, write the vision. If you can't write the vision for what it is you want to achieve and not just write it in your mind, but literally write it down. Do you have a mission statement? I'm working on something right now, and, the, and I'm going to be presenting it to some people who I need to buy in on, on this, um, this idea of I've, I've got. The very first thing I did was write the mission statement. And after the mission statement, which is just two lines, if you can't write it in two lines, you haven't got it figured out. Then I wrote the belief system upon which that mission statement is based. I'm good to go. Because when I might have doubts about this project, I can go back and look at my mission statement. I can look at the core beliefs that gave rise to this mission statement and go, this stuff's spot on. We got to do this. So it it reinvigorates me. And I think that's important because there is no project. Uh, This podcast, all of the great things you've done in your career, all the, the, um, the interviews and the companies you work with, not everybody says yes every time. And so when you've gotten the no, um, You've got to figure out how to get past no and either say, okay, fine, no, not for you or no, not right now um, and move on to the next yes, because you're always going to hear no. It's like the story of my life you just summarized. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But it it helps. I mean, I I think about last year, I I pitched uh, hundreds of companies and now my business is thriving more than ever. So yeah, you sometimes have to take a step back or be willing to hear a lot of no's before yeah. you get some yeses in every aspect of your life. And that's like a true testament to, again, accountability, perseverance, and everything we've been talking about. And you also mentioned like interviewing a lot of people. You've interviewed a ton of people over your career. What are your, some of your best interview tips? Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Um, well, people love to talk about themselves. Um, I, you know, it, interviewing is actually very easy. Um, I mean, I think there's, it, it, this, this is a good one. Um, Sometimes I'll frequently be, you know, back when we went places and did things um, pre-pandemic, you'd be, you know, speaking at an event or something and you're at one of those round tables of 10 and you don't know anybody and you've kind of got to sing for your supper. And one of my questions that I love to toss out that always evokes some really interesting responses is, I preface it by quoting a friend of mine who years ago said this to me. She said, your mother's voice will ring in your heart forever. She said, what is it you still hear your mother say? And we all can remember the pronouncements of our moms because whatever our mom was preaching, she didn't just give that sermon once. You got that sermon on a regular basis. And I love to ask that question in a social situation. What is it you still hear your mother say? Um, Because I've learned a lot of wisdom in hearing the answers from those questions. I remember one man at a luncheon in San Diego, he said, oh gosh, I 
totally answer that without even thinking. As I'd be running out the back door, he said, and the screen would be slamming behind me. I would hear my mother holler at me as I'm running, you know, down the path to meet up with my friends. Remember where you come from. Remember, Mm. you represent this family. Remember the values that we've given you. That one little phrase, remember where you come from, has is loaded with so much. And, and I just personally, I sort of adopted that as, as one of my mottos and I I speak in bumper stickers to my kids. And that's one of, I've adopted that as one of my bumper stickers. My mom's motto is be careful. I've, I think I'm pretty sure I've heard be careful every single day for 37 years without a break, even in other countries. Like if I'm in Cuba, be careful, like wherever. And there was like a, there was a big hurricane there. So there's more emphasis, but yeah, every day. And so you, you remember it because you know, it's like a political campaign. If you only hear a slogan once, you're not going to remember it. But if it gets pounded into you, you're more likely to remember it. And advertising, right. you got to see an ad, you know, at least uh, three times to recall it as well. And well, there's a good thing too on sales and the best book ever written on, on successful salesmanship was, was penned by that esteemed author, Dr. Seuss. And the book is called Green Eggs and Ham. And if you count up the number of times that funky little creature offers up the green eggs and ham, Sam, I am Sam, I am tried to serve up that green eggs and ham 16 times before that creature said, yeah, I'll try it. And then he liked green eggs and ham. I do like them. Sam, I am the average salesman pitches twice. The average person has to be pitched at least five or six times before they make the sales connection. Most of us are unsuccessful because we give up too quickly. I love that. And what's your best piece of career advice? Ooh, my best piece of career advice. Um, I used to have it pinned on the screen of my computer right here. And it's a quote from one of my wise women who doesn't know she's part of my personal board of directors, but she is. And she once said to me, there are many ways to define success. And I think that's really good career advice. Well, that's great advice. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this.